All right, let's look at unique constraint versus unique index. So always imagine, first of all, how it will be used and what is the column going to be used for, how many filters will apply to the column later on. Be careful about what developers tell you as far as they say, oh, it'll not be used ever for filtering or whatnot. Eh, probably is not going to be true. And then what is the impact in the results when you did uh, test both? Let's do a quick example of that just to show you. Suppose we want to create two tables. One is a Bitcoin uh, timetable, or both of them are Bitcoin timetables. And in one, we're going to set Bitcoin time as the primary key clustered constraint. And the other one, we're just going to set it as a unique constraint. Um, you'll see, and I've shown you here, the impact. If I, by the way, insert both of those values, uh, I'll get an error on both of them. So, I mean, it validates fine. But you can see the impact uh, on the second image, um, which is in the, the first table. We have that, of course, clustered index, um, which is good. And we have the you know clustered key. But in the second example, what we have is it actually created us a non-clustered unique index. And we have a the constraint key on there, okay? Now, my preference, of course, is gonna be for table one because it has a primary key uh, clustered index. And uh, that's gonna be a preference anyway because the other table does not. Now, of course, if, if it's some type of staging table, but again, if it's a staging table, you gotta ask yourself um, whether you're going to have those limitations because the limitations may be later on down the stream. In the case of something like Bitcoin, I always wanna make sure that the date time that it's inserted is unique because I should never ever be getting the same Bitcoin uh, value at the same point in time. I'm only mining for uh, later down the road, right? So let's say I check every 30 seconds. Well, it should be 30 seconds later. It should never be at the same time, period. And even if I mine off of several exchanges, each of those different exchanges, in my example, would be different tables. So again, that timestamp should always be unique, okay? Number two, will it ever need to be disabled? Unique indexes can be disabled. Uh, number three, in a worst case scenario, what would be the estimated cost uh, for redesign. Let's suppose you did need to redesign it. What would be the estimated cost? Make sure you document that. And regardless of what choice you do, just make sure you document the what and why of your preference. It should be, you know, two or three sentences at most. It's not something that needs to be complicated, but you can put that in the application uh, documentation and say, hey, we chose this uh, for this reason or whatnot. Again, the big one here is uh, test, uh, evaluate the impact, and always remember the, the other cost as well associated um, uh, with, for instance, indexing versus constraints, uh, especially on the application side. And then remember too, that when it comes to developers, sometimes they don't really know what's going to be used or what's going to happen later on down the road. So just use your typical DBA intuition of, mm -hmm, I've heard this a lot and yet yeah, this is what generally happens. Um, and in many cases, more than likely, I would go with the, uh, the actual index over just a unique constraint.